Hey friends, it's just good, and welcome to the first installment of the AE Modular Video Library, the series that aims to give you a deep dive look into each and every module of the AE Modular format. This being the first installment of this series, there is going to be quite a lot of talking because we're going to be exploring what AE Modular is, a little bit of the history of it, and providing some different resources for you so that you can go and explore this in your own time. But after that, I'm going to be releasing each episode weekly. Now keep in mind, you don't have to watch each episode as they come out. The way that this series will be laid out is more of a resource guide, so you should be able to watch them in any order. I'm using green thumbnails for the official Tangible Waves modules, which are the company behind the actual system itself. And then I'm using pink thumbnails for third-party modules like the Euclid Grid and the EuroPi down here. So if you're watching this after a few episodes have already been released, feel free to jump around and explore them as you need them. There are several videos out already. I have been planning this series for a while, but I started making videos about some of the third party modules a little bit early on. They're still going to be included in this series. I've changed the thumbnail to fit. The only difference being is that they won't have the fancy intro or an outro. So like I said before, this video is going to cover what AE Modular is, my history with it, my thoughts on it, uh, some AE Modular resources, and then a big old demo patch towards the end. So A Modular was created by Robert Langer, and in 2017, he released the A Modular system as a Kickstarter project, got enough backers, and fast forward to today, there are a ton of modules available for it and very happy users such as myself. Unlike other modular synthesizer formats, A Modular is quite tiny, as you can see by the size of these modules, and they use jumper cables for patching, which makes it a really small, but feasible system because you can fit a lot into a very little table size. I've actually had my eye on a modular ever since it first released. I was a little bit unsure about backing the Kickstarter project myself, so I just wanted to sit back and kind of watch how it develops because being a modular system, it really depends, of course, on a lot of modular stuff like, you know, third party developers or adding modules to it. I didn't really want to buy into a synthesizer that I had to build and was very limited by the amount of modules. And fortunately, I can say that today, Tangible Waves themselves have put out an absolute truckload of modules. And now there are plenty of third party modules to help you explore it the way that you want to. You might notice that my system is black and a lot of the early A modular systems were only gray MDF board for their front panels, um, but now they uh, make them in this black sort of PCB paneling, which I like a lot more. So yeah, initially I liked the idea, but I didn't dive in straight away. I did see uh, some early reviews, some people really liked it, but there were a couple of negative reviews that were floating around on Reddit, particularly criticizing some of the patch cable sort of stuff, which I've heard has now been fixed and I myself haven't faced any durability issues using any of these sockets. So it has sort of gone under a few little revisions and updates to different modules and the way the whole thing works. Also, being so early on, I at the time didn't really understand a whole lot about modular. I'd just gotten my head around like basic synthesizer formats. And uh, yeah, I'd started to explore VCV rack a little bit more and then got my hands on the Empress Zoya, which also furthered me into the modular world. At that time, of course, I really wanted Euro rack, but being so new to the world of modular, I didn't really want to drop a whole deal of money on something that I wasn't really sure if it was for me or not. So in the meantime, I sat back and started to explore the world of group boxes, which I did with the Synthstrom Deluge. The Deluge was my first group box, and I liked it so much that I made a entire series explaining how to use it so that other people could just have one really big resource that they could sift through in order to learn this thing. During that time, one of my viewers was Carsten, and he works with Tangible Waves. And he reached out to me and said, why don't you pick up a system? Because they're really, really cool and it plays nicely with the deluge. I hadn't thought about a modular for a little while at that point. And I thought, you know what? Maybe now's the time to jump on in. So I ordered an a modular starter rack two and have slowly been building it ever since. Now I put out a video on the A Modular Starter Rack 2 when I first got it and explored like a bunch of different patches and showed off some of the cool sounds and whatnot. Now being so early on in Modular, I don't even think I took full advantage of that Starter Rack 2. Um, I really sort of gave it my best shot, but now that I've learned so much more about Modular, um, yeah, like what a fantastic little system to start with. 
From there, I decided to jump into the world of third-party modules, not only because I found some of them really, really interesting, but Tangible Waves does have a little bit of a wait time at the moment due to a lot of different factors. And I just couldn't really wait to get my hands on more modules. And I thought, you know what? I really want more third-party modules for this. So what better way to sort of aim for that by supporting third-party developers? So most of my videos, except for Sampler over here, have purely focused on third-party modules. Um, I've got one up here, the MM33, the Two Castles, RBSS, EuroPy, Euclid Grid, the th these three wonky stuff modules uh, for drums, the 555, Le Module, and Two Auto over here. Adding these modules to my rack has really opened it up into such a cool little Sonic playground. It's still limited in a lot of ways. I've only got like two envelopes, two VCAs, a very small mixer, but I'm really happy with what I've managed to put together here. It's like a fun little groove box of a modular synth. So if you're wondering about the TLDR version, I absolutely love this little format. It's definitely not Euro rack. It's not a Zoya. It's not VCV rack. It's really its own thing. It's got its own sound. It's got its own characters. It's just a fantastic little budget way to get into modular synthesis and start making music. The modules are really cheap. They don't set me back that far compared to a lot of other systems out there. And even if I didn't wind up making music with this thing, which I definitely do, it's such a great tool for learning different synthesis methods. So I think it goes without saying that I highly recommend picking up one of these if you haven't already. They're really, really fun. I might also mention that it plays really, really nicely with others. We've got MIDI into this thing and a third party developer, Wonky Stuff, has released a dedicated MIDI module so that you can have up to 16 MIDI tracks going into your system, which is just bonkers. Uh, really, really cool. And it also supports CV in. I've only got two inputs here and they're coming from the CV and gate tracks of my Deluge, but you can get a module that allows you to plug in more. So yeah, it plays really good with other modular formats, plays really good with group boxes and other synthesizers. It's worth noting just on that note that it is zero to five volts. So keep that in mind when you're using it with other gear. So let's get into why I'm making this series in the first place. Personally, I think that this series is critically undersung. I do see it sort of mentioned on a few forums here and there, and it kind of pops up on YouTube every now and then. But aside from that, that doesn't really seem to be a great deal of people using it. Uh, sometimes I mention it to people online and they haven't even heard of it, uh, which is just crazy to me because it's so great. I mean, other synthesizer manufacturers have tried making smaller sort of budget uh, modular stuff in the past, but uh, this this one really hits the nail on the head. It is a budget modular synth. It set out to do what it did. It's got third party developers. You couldn't really ask for anything more. So because I want this thing to succeed, I want to contribute to it in some way. I want to provide learning resources by making this series that explains each module. I want to get people excited about it. And I want to sort of add to the number of videos on YouTube about this sort of thing. Hopefully this series will be a really good indicator to somebody if it's something that they want to spend money on and dive into or not. I personally think that there should be a lot more A modular content out there. So yeah, this is my way of contributing to that. There is already a wiki available that does give detailed instructions on how all of these modules work, but I always think having video documentation of these modules can be helpful for beginners, potential buyers, and just be an overall great resource for an already great community. Speaking of resources, don't just take my series for it. If you really do have your sights set on one of these things, I'm going to leave a bunch of resources in the video description. Not only is the Tangible Waves website really good for getting up and running and buying your modules and seeing what it's all about, there's also the A Modular Wiki, like I said before, which is not only full of module documentation, but it also has like a lot of DIY documentation. And on that note, I probably should have mentioned this before. I'm not really a DIY guy. Um, I don't really know how much of that sort of stuff works, but I do know that this stuff is really DIY friendly and that's why third-party developers are starting to experiment with it a lot more. There is also the AE Modular Forum, which is absolutely huge. There's a lot of people on there. They're doing different patch breakdowns every now and then. There's a lot of module discussion. It's a very active little forum and I highly recommend checking it out. 
As well as that, there's also the A modular Discord, which is quite active. There's a lot of people on there. If you spend about a week, you're going to quickly learn who everybody is. Um, they're sort of sharing their music, they're sharing DIY and patch ideas. It's a really, really great place. And I've met a lot of really cool and interesting people that way. About once a month as well, um, a lot of A modular users get together for an A modular meetup over Zoom, which is a really fun place to sort of chat amongst each other and share different ideas and what you're working on and what your hopes for the future are or ask any questions if you need assistance. And hopefully I'm not leaving anything else out here, but finally there's the A modular Facebook group. Um, yeah, I mean, feel free to go and check that out as well. Hashtags on Instagram, all that sort of stuff. In terms of the videos in this series, the way that they're kind of structured in each video is that there'll be an intro, a general overview, showing how to use the module and some different patch demonstrations. And then usually I'll follow them up by three musical demo patches of some sort before moving on to the outro. I might just mention too that I do use the A modular system for that, but a lot of the time I've also got it hooked up to external gear like the Deluge just because it can be really helpful for helping sequence some of this stuff. And yes, I do have sequences, but we can just sort of um, provide extra drums or fills, percussions, whatever I need. And then nine times out of 10, I'm routing it into the Zoya over here, which is just adding a little bit of compression and saturation. Not entirely necessary. I usually don't have that on during the overview section, but I like the way it makes my music sound. So moving on towards the end here, I do have one quick favor to ask. I don't usually like asking my viewers to like and subscribe, but because I'm launching this series and I really want a modular to sort of appear in front of more people, I would like it, you know, if you would watch to the end of each of these videos, give them a like and subscribe, share the videos around if you can, and mainly just help the YouTube algorithm place them in front of more people so that more people can get excited about this budget modular synth. I don't really think that there's much else that I have to say at this point other than I hope that you enjoy the series and I hope it's useful to some people out there who are just starting off with AE Modular. Hit the like if you like and if you don't, tell me why. Please subscribe, check me out on Patreon and I hope that you enjoy the demo patch that it's about to play. Cheers, I'll see you in the next one.